Hello guys, I wanted to do a very quick introduction to the video I made today. So today there is a very small reveal about my Patreon project. I'll be starting that one soon. Soon, not today. I'll be giving you the ins and outs of that um, very quickly. Um, but there is a little news at the end of this video. So I'll write down the time when that part starts in case you're not interested in the rest. So if you don't know what the Patreon project is going to be about, it's going to be about watercolour and mixed media. And there's also going to be a tier for people who want to about watercolour mixed media and personal storytelling. So, but more news about that later and you can already check out the very tiny reveal I'm doing at the end of this video. Right, so the rest of the video is going to be sort of a review or, well not review, it's going to be my sharing some work that I did in a Lewis Rosignol um, online workshop that I did this week. Um, so just um, it's, check it out because it's really great. I hope you enjoy the video and if you like my video and if you like the account then sign up for my, um, subscribe to my channel and also if you want to keep up to be kept up to date about the Patreon project on another in another way than just this YouTube channel then you might want to sign up for my newsletter you can do so on mandyvanhoeer.com there you will find a link to um, the subscription form for my newsletter I don't send out a lot of newsletters at all my last newsletter has been months ago and I only share things that are really worth sharing I don't um, I'm, I'm not a, a marketing canon a bull or anything at all um, but it might be very interesting because that's where I will definitely be um, um, calling out, shouting out every new step on that uh, project. So thanks very much for watching and I hope you really enjoy the video. I hope you enjoyed as much as I have enjoyed the work that I did this week, as you can see. Hey guys, welcome to another vlog. Um, this week and the week the next week i'm going to be working very hard on the project um so there's my patreon project coming and i will be starting that early june um i hope maybe first i'm aiming at the first but i have to get back into the flow of my work um this is where i keep all my the, the entire project is in this book and I've got two notebooks and um, I have to dive fully back in because um, I, I lost it a little bit which isn't really um, strange after moving out my eldest daughter and then last week I was a bit naive and thinking yay now I can start the work on the project only I got my second COVID shot and I did have some side effects first time when I got my first shot um, I wasn't really sure if it was just side effects or that it was just me being really tired or something but this time around I knew very well this was side effects because it affected me pretty much was incredibly heavily tired you know like heavy as in feeling as if you're a, a lead anvil or something um, and um, the other thing was I was super dizzy it was like being drunk without the fun um, and it lasted quite a bit because, of course, we were really super tired after moving out my daughter. And then came the vaccine. So, anyway, long story short, the project is on its way. Yay! Just be a little more patient. <laughs> so am I. Right, so what have I been up to? Well, I'm going to show you that filming um, overhead, so filming down, but I wanted to show you all my pretty face um, because I wanted to just say hi as well. Um, last week I was too tired to do anything um, re work related. My mind was, was in a big thick fog and um, I know when I feel that way I have to step out or else. And um, so I did, but on the other hand I was trying to keep myself connected to my creative side because that I find is also very important because if I lose the creative work for um, too long a period of time so more than well a weekend sometimes is already long but then um, I find it really hard to get back into it I don't really know 
why and how it works i will probably find out in the coming year during the patreon project because there will of course be time out times out and then i will have to jump back in to make sure the project keeps going so it's going to be something i'm going to learn a lot from um but this time around i knew that um anything work related was beyond me um I, part of me longed for um, to paint beautiful watercolour, but um, due to the dizziness of the COVID shot, I was trembling slightly. <laughs> and when, um, if you know my work, like, like this work, it's super detailed. Um, you can't do that when you're trembling. You have to have a very steady hand. So I decided not to frustrate myself. Instead, I did something else. I did, um, I took the Lewis Rosignol sketchbooking class or workshop on Carla Sonheim's site. And um, I love that course. I'm, I've done quite a few online courses in, in recent years. Um, basically, every time I feel stuck in a rut, that's what I do. Um, either I go onto YouTube and look for new techniques or something, or I talk to artist friends and I ask them what they're doing or I sometimes um, I go over to um, a friend's studio and just leaf through their work and and go like how did you do this and they don't really actually teach me but sometimes they give me you know a few lines and then I go back home and I gather all the supplies and I just start experimenting and always that's always the point where from from where I can get back into my work so that's why um, I did the Lewis Rosignol course. And what's really funny, because this is a course that's running, well, it's running, it's it's a self-paced course. So if you're interested, I can highly recommend it. It's very um, um, inspiring. Um, he, Lewis Rosignol, I think, is a really great teacher, um, a great artist uh, in first place, but also a great teacher in that he's not really a teacher teacher. So I like that. Um, personally, I like... Um, learning from people who give me clues rather than um, spell it out for me and um, Lewis gives clues but spells it out you know a, a little bit a tiny bit but he doesn't really kill the fun some teachers spell it out so much it kills the fun um, I think that's why I'm not on Skillshare I mean I did do a couple of things but I found that to be a place where pe teachers spell it out and I, I'd rather have artists teach me how they do it about ish so that I can start experimenting but what's really funny is that it's not the first time I've worked with his techniques that is to say um, I'm, I'm looking for the date here in 2018 in the summer I um, was stuck in a rut usually summer holidays are bad because you know nobody's around everyone's on holiday and um, there is very little to do online as well um, so that's usually the time when I feel low in my inspiration especially when it's hot so what I did is I went over to his site I think or his Instagram and I stole from him like an artist um, that is to say I didn't actually steal well I did I'll show you in a minute um, but um, I studied his techniques and I borrowed from that um, and I discovered something really great about his technique and I'll show you that in a minute so it's kind of fun these are this is a whole bunch of drawings I made Louis Rosignol well styled for Louis Rosignol inspired and then this is a little sketchbook I am filling with Lewis Rosignol's course with his um, uh, with his teachings so let me start filming overhead so I can show you the before and and the current <laughs> gonna change camera okay so I hope you guys can see everything I'm gonna show you um, so Lewis Rosignol um, I am putting a link right beneath the video so you can look up his work and also post a link to his course um, on Carla Sondheim's website. I'm not getting paid for this. This is just me 
you know, doing a sort of a recommendation, but also showing you things I've been doing. So Lewis Rosenthal has a very um, loose style, a lot of inks and some collage in it, and usually just a few tads of color, but his style is very minimalistic. Well, you can see immediately I didn't pull that one off. Also, what I found, because um, he always uses um, text and um, images drawn and um, collaged, is that to me it is a perfect style for um, political protest or it's um, a perfect style for expressing um, either my um, journal entry, so things that happen to me, thoughts and feelings that occur in the inside of me, and sometimes feelings that I think are universal. So let's go through it. So this is obviously um, in a time that I was very frustrated about something I read about Trump, um, when probably when America didn't want to partake in the, um, um, in the Paris climate, what is it? Um, in the climate, what's it called? The climate deals, you know. Um, so here it says, what do you mean climate change? Climate change. I was just playing with my balls. So, um, well, I just cut out some balls, you know, quote unquote. Um, and, well, this represents um, a political leader. <laughs> right, then... Here, um, once I got going, because that's what usually happens, and especially this um, this style by Lewis Rosnell, if you start doing, if you take the course, there's one thing you have to be mindful of. Once you get going, you can't stop anymore because it's so, it gets you in a flow, um, this way of working. At least it got me in a flow, so maybe it does that for you. So here was like Nukem. I, 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 at the time, he and King Yum, King Lo, Kim Young Un, um, I felt were very keen on the red button of some sort of a, a chemical or a um, uh, atomic weapon. So Nukem, new in the toy store, Nukem for future new Dukes. Nukem looks just like the real thing, and yeah, well, sort of like the figure reminiscing, reminiscent of something, right? So this is again about some political leader somewhere in the world where, um, you know, kids and, and parents were separated, immigrants, refugees, they were separated at the border. Kids to the right, parents to the left, and, and lots of barbed wire. Um, yeah. So it's rather strong opinions and strong protest in, in the work. It's what this style did for me um this was just a random image i cut out from a uh, magazine and um i, I put I, I pasted that or i i stuck that in and um the, all the color you see here in the background um was uh, pan pastel i think so this is, I think, a line from uh, Moon Age Daydream. So um, a, a song text by uh, Bowie. I'm an alligator. I'm a mom and papa coming for you. I'm a space invader. I'll be a rock and rolling bitch for you. <laughs> Which I found super funny because she doesn't really look like a rock and rolling bitch. So I find that, and you will also see that in the journal that I'm making now, the sketchbook. Um, I find humor is something that this style really allows for, at least for me. So, um, well, here is, um, you know, when the eyes, when the eyes really smile, nothing else matters. Um, I think I was listening to Metallica at the time and I think I stuck in a smile, um, and then drew from there and, you know, found a face here that, well, this text sort of implies that this woman's been having, um, you know, treatment for cancer, probably. Um, and then when the eyes don't really smile, and they don't, nothing does. So this is an answer to the previous page. When the eyes really smile, nothing else matters. 
and then here you know somebody's definitely not smiling <laughs> so this is sort of an interaction between one piece of art and the other which is why i believe that if i ever sell these i should sell them together <laughs> I didn't really make them to sell. I made them to experiment. They are part of my creative laboratory. Okay, so here it was super hot. I don't remember how hot. It's called climate change. Oh no, please don't let the weather get even better. So that's a very um, sarcastic um, page. Again, a sense of humour, a black sense of humour. And yeah, sort of like these ominous characters. And I like, again, I like the simplicity. I made, I made these pages in pff, sometimes 10 minutes, half an hour. And, um, yeah, they really, really invite a lot of personality. Okay, so this is, um, I don't know, a crazy page experimenting with a character face. Just an inks, no pencil lines whatsoever. I don't even know if I used a reference picture or not. Um, I said just nobody knew when he turned into a fruitcake. Um, and I think I based that one on this, on these children, on this girl feeding the boy and a peach or an apple. Um, which I find kind of funny. A broken man, it's called. Okay, and then here is some deeper work. It's not... Uh, it's not autobiographic per se, but these are, you know, feelings that were conjured up. There was this little girl who was very intensely working on, you know, a craft project, um, not noticing the world. And um, so I found it very, um, um, how do you say it, a a appealing, it's sort of like, jumped into my mind to put a lot of characters in that um in the, in this image and just right and she never even noticed um and of course it's like an ominous picture is it i mean there's the blood red words and there is the raven there and here is you know a, a black figure embracing a white ghost-like figure um so it's sort of ominous like you don't have to see it that way. It's how I, how I interpret it. It's like making a little horror movie in one frame, and you you can only guess what's happening there. Okay, and now um, you know again the summer. It was very warm, so oh my god, it's summer again. And now she's working out. I found this image of a woman doing gymnastics, and well, somebody responding to that image. I don't really like this image very much. The eyes should have been whiter and maybe I should put some 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 white. Maybe I should make, make the eyes white because they don't really pop, do they? I'm gonna put that aside and I might I might do that still. Well I'm not a perfectionist. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, so this I think is one of the first pages. I think I I think I went in there fr back to front, but right, so they promised me heaven, so where is it? The sky is just so high. And I think the thing is that it was my response to these ads where, you know, when you, you wear that bra, you will find yourself in heaven. But she's got that bra and she doesn't really, she hasn't really found heaven. <laughs> okay, so um, this is a little, um, a little cutout I did wherever you go to the beach to the forest or the beach always your mother at hand and always on the hand of your mother and then here it says so how how should that happen and then these you know are holding hands and um, something you know there's one child happily looking at the mother and the other child is not so happy this is not autobiographic it's just something something that happens um, when I make my work, I tend to to put an itch in there, something that itches, or um, and I find this style to be really good. And then there is this person here um, talking to the audience, to you, the viewer, saying she's only human, she's only human, you know. So that suggests that she's doing something wrong. So when you look at her again, you'll see she sort of seems to be favouring this one over that one, or something like that. 
So it's not a flawless mother. Childhood memories are very often about not flawless mothers, right? Then here is another, the, the, this was the mum theme and the mum theme happened because these cutouts come from magazines I bought from the 20s, I think, or the 30s that had advice in there for mothers. So this is um, about a VAT for, um, for, for house mothers. <laughs> That's what it says, house mothers. So here, here this is, mothers don't eat caviar. Um, this is about how um, how here this um, it's sort of like a list um, about VAT and how mothers can best deal with VAT. But it sort of suggests that um, um, that women shouldn't spend too much on them on themselves. So that's why I said, "Mum's mum, a uh, ma'am sausage is good enough for you." Um, no caviar. That's sort of what, what I felt when I read this, that um, women were considered less valuable and less worthy of buying expensive stuff than men. So that made me pissed up, pissed me off. <laughs> so here, this was rather funny. I, I drew a face and I stuck this in and then I said in 1934, so that's, that's how old the magazine is and there's this... Um, this Eau de Cologne, um, uh, I, I can't remember the English name for that. Eau de Cologne? No. Now, anyway, um, in 1934, they already knew that life stinks. So that's where I look for humour um, in, in such things. I, and I find that so much easier to do in really quick techniques. So this is one I really, really love. And if if I'm correct, I used a photo of Gary Lightbody for this. So that's uh, Snow Patrol's um, lead singer, I think. And he doesn't even look like him, although he's got black hair <laughs> and longer curls. So, but I, I really like this. And the reason why I make this such a happy, joyful image is because I had just read that Gary Lightbody is actually um, depressed. He, he's... Um, um, I read about him suffering from uh, clinical depression. So, um, yeah, I think I wanted to cheer him up <laughs> or myself. Because, yeah, it's like, um, yeah, and then it's, I found this confetti each day, tout va bien, everything's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, right. So it's like what he think, what he's thinking. Yeah, right. Everything's okay. So again, you know, there's always the, the black and white, the balance, and I like the the black humour. Sign of the Times, um, I think this was a this was yeah, this was the second one. Sign of the Times, um, important task, things to do, um, you know, the balance of the clock, um, most important tasks, things to do today, smile, be busy, post on Insta um challenges smile um priority priority so it's like something i think this was sort of um an art journal page you no know, diary page and this was just funny what are you grinning what you're grinning for watch the news today eh? nothing to laugh about i tell you so a sort of sheepishly laughing person with a very angry person and I really like the interaction between the two and I think it's also kind of funny. So I'm going to put down my sketchbook and then I'm going to see if it's well enough in sight. Yes, I think it is. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so this is the course that I started on and it's I've started it last week. So there is a couple of um, half empty pages. And I'll be working on those. So this is the very first one I did, and um, well, it's it's very it was all about it's all about you know um, um, compositions about making a great composition without necessarily making something, you know. It's like throwing in a couple of things and then finding you know a, a composition that you really like. So um, well, this sort of became a, a journal page. Like I really do see. 
and sometimes um, I see I really do see and sometimes I wish I didn't um, which is what I try to express here you know there's so many people not looking at what happens in the world and I do and that that can be heavy sometimes so here is another one um, you know playing with a different technique um, and I, I really like that. I use a lot of book pages for my art journals, um, um, for my diary pages that I that I use as a basis for my own story. Um, later on in the same book, you will see that anything can become your story or can relate to your story and thereby express it and become an imprint of your story. So here we go, which is really funny what I hardly ever did is make holes in a page so it's like you can use a hole twice to sort of pull you know a composition together over pages so this is very lewis rosignol with the with the um you know stippling the um you know and it's not like as beautiful a page as that of losing lewis rosignol's but um it is sort of it is useful to play with um things like this with elements like this and they will probably never really be mine but um well let's see and here we go like um, you know again expressing an opinion art is about embracing other artists work and then letting go to do your own thing the thing is that when i was doing this this felt so much like impersonating lewis rosignol that's always you know the struggle i'm dealing with and i'm learning from an artist is part of me wants to learn the technique and the other part of me wants to express my thing so here you know i had only done these pages um when i landed here i was already fighting with myself over that so that's why i made this page sort of just to make the statement for myself um not to remind myself but more to well sort of um kickstart um a change to my own thing to my own um, themes a bit more and to my own um, style so here is more my own style this is work you've seen from me before in different um, you know with different supplies different setting only I did borrow something very literally from him which is the empty text balloon um, but that so fits this um, I was just writing something down and you, you will run into that in a minute. Thoughts become words, words become text, text kills trees, let's be quiet. Um, in other words, let's not think too much, let's try to be really quiet. Um, and I really, I, I sort of like that and I sort of like putting in a tree, you know, with the hands that can either feel reaching out, like help me, don't cut me down, don't think too much, don't put it into words, don't put it into text, or it can just be a tree, it can be a bit spooky or scary, whatever you like. And then here the, the, the scratching, scribbling thing. So, and then we move on to another sort of more Louis Rosignol oriented page that I, I so enjoy drawing ears. That's not normal, is it? I mean, it's got to be, um, you know sort of a mental illness <laughs> but it's it's really strange but ears are so interesting because they are, are organic all over when you draw an eye for instance there is a perfect circle and another perfect circle and there are arches and you know sort they sort of feel like a mathematical thing sometimes but with ears everything about the ear is round whatever direction you look at everything's round you know, even when you think about how an ear goes to the inside, where you have the hearing thing and the the, the spiral thing on the inside, I don't know exactly what it's called, and it was just so interesting. And ears are just fascinating to draw. So I draw this one without pencil. This is, you know, straight in, in inks, and that's what Lewis Rosignol does all the time. So you get lots of mistakes and lots of things that shouldn't be, that are not exactly correct, but very... I, th I like I like it you know even though they're not very correct and I really like how this turned out I'm really proud of my ear <laughs> so ears are hard to draw maybe as hard as it is to listen so I kind of liked that text it sort of like has this you know index finger going about it right and then Janet's boobs I found a little 
um, scrap of paper with the words on it, the Boston von Janet, Janet's boobs. So um, that made it very easy to look up the organic shape of a bra and I chose a very old bra and then when I was doing that, I was looking at, and I was thinking of posting that on Instagram and then I thought, no, it's going to be considered offensive. And then I wrote on this, made to be censored, which of course my drawing might be made, might be made to be censored online, on social media. But then I thought, if you, if when I come to think of it, the entire female body is made to be censored, you know. Um, tits are not allowed on on social media even even breastfeeding is not allowed so what I wrote on that bra is like a very old I think 20s or 30s bra and then it's got the 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 wording on the elastic band underneath the boobs um, that's like um, modern day um, male um, slips and and boxer shorts that have this you know the elastic with the words and it's offensive content which I was really I loved finding that so this I find a rather humorous humorous and sad page like I said I love making work that has an itch to it you know that makes you sort of uncomfortable it's like you can grin or laugh about it but also feel a bit mm, at the same time right so here is my my initial note the note that i made on on a scrap piece of paper thoughts become words words become text text kills trees and <laughs> let's be quiet um so here i drew a shape and then a face and i don't like this page although i like elements in it um and yet on the other hand i do like it's 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 a weird thing i wouldn't this is very private this is something i i make i make lots of things like this pages like this and sketches like this I don't show them but I make them so I'm showing you now on my patreon because this is where you will get an open view you know you will also be seeing everything I screw up and uh, well screw ups are not screw ups that's where you learn so here I learned something about giving it a little bit more space if I had given it a little bit more space it might have been it might have been good or better and maybe should have done something here to make the head pop out a little more because now it's sort of like um, transferring gradually into the background and I'm not sure I like that so now we're moving on to a page I'm so proud of BAM look at that this is also not no pencil nothing this is just you know starting to draw and then you know doing this in in um, I've got my my Lamy fountain pen and uh, my absolute favorite fountain pen ink for drawing is um, diamine or diamine, 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 diamine. Well, anyway, onyx black because that's really beautiful black. Um, and I love how it turns out. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in taking this course, I have a Soho um what's it called it's a soho soho blank notebook a5 196 pages 140 gram paper 14 by 21 centimeters fine non-wood cream paper and thread binding it's i it's i think absolutely fantastic for the job i have to say um it's it's um it's what do you say that it's it's cheap enough to be cheap to be to work fast on and to make mistakes without being bothered and it's good enough not to bleed because you know actually did use quite a bit of watercolor in here and ink you know big fat lines that i went over 10 20 times and you can't see them on the back well by accident here is um i stuck something on but here on the tree as well even the very dark lines you don't you, you don't it doesn't it hardly bleeds this isn't even a bleed so that's pretty fantastic so this guy I love this guy I don't know this guy but I love him and I, I never knew I, I could draw him until I did and the funny thing is <coughs> this guy was an exercise by Lewis Rossignol right but then here is the Robalus Suprufus, Suprufus which is a beetle and I found it's only a very small one and I found it in a plant um, that afternoon 
So I brought in this um, beetle um, to um, to shoot the bug to um, to make this sort of. So this is, has become a diary page. Counting species on the foliage in his garden, a new one every day, is what I do myself. So this is another person's face, but it is about me. So and I like how nobody needs to know this. I'm telling you that now. But it's become a story. Only it's my story and no one knows. So again, this page is an imprint of my own story. It's not my own story, but it's an imprint. So and then I <laughs> I wanted to draw of my friend Caroline's face. Uh, only, <clears throat> pardon me, um, I was interrupted by um, another friend, uh, Deb, we had um, uh, a video call and the thing is that Deb and Caroline are two American ladies and they um, have some outwardly, sh some shared outwardly appearance characteristics. Only the thing is, um, I kept on drawing while I was talking to Deb and I kept looking, of course, at her talking to me and I sort of forgot to look at the um, image I found of Caroline. And what happened is that the two got combined here in this image, which is quite funny. They both love flowers, so um, I decided to, um, to well, put the text in and say, well, mums require flowers in the, fall, in the fall of their lives. And mums, I learned, is short for chrysanthemums. Um, so in English or in American, I'm not sure, I don't rem I remember which one it was. But if you go to a flower shop and say, I want a bunch of mums, this is what you get, chrysanthemums. So, and also, you know, <sighs> anyway, so here is another one I really, really, really super love because I love how this um, composition worked out. So here's a lady and I'll read you the text. So Frida shaved her eyebrows and lived Nobody knew, even she herself forgot. Incluso ella misma de se olvidó. Se olvidó. She forgot it so bad that she forgot what she forgot. Who's Frida? She asks. And I so like this because everyone I showed this page was like, "This is Frida Kahlo," <laughs> and it's funny of course because I, I talk about eyebrows and I included some Spanish, so you would think, but is it? Who's Frida, she asks, and even though she seems quite demented, she might be the only one asking the right questions, isn't it? So um, I kind of really liked that, and I kind of liked how this, and it grew, because I think I only knew I wanted to write down Frida shaved her eyebrows and lived, period. And then I didn't know how to continue, and I just did, and it worked out really great. So I love how how working in Lewis Rosignol techniques just leads from one thing to the next to the next to the next so um, it very often it surprises me so then um, there is the grid thing that he teaches in this course and I I I was reluctant to do this because it's a lot of work you know and I'm not really into I mean I like this this I can print and hang up on the wall and be really super proud but this is like mm, I'm not sure so I included a nice face and um, but the thing was that when I got going um, I mean I copied this little thing from him and I copied the idea of, of putting in bugs so I have a fly and I have some ladybugs and I copied his idea of the leaf and then you know I had to continue on my own and do my thing um, and I kind of like it because here it says follow the thread, like follow the thread, all work, no play. And then, you know, I'm sort of, here is my own feelings. What am I doing here? What am I doing this for? And then it all was about, you know, you know, play um, and play versus work and everything. And um, I really like how it turned out, even though I didn't like it at the beginning and I wasn't really keen on trying. So, and then, let's see how much we got. Oh, yeah. Then this was the second uh, grid I did. So I, I didn't hate it too much, I guess. But what I wanted 
was this was a bit uh, messy and I wanted to make it cleaner so I actually did make it cleaner only <laughs> looking back I think I like this one better <laughs> um, and this started out with um, a little scrap from um, a dictionary that I stuck in that says Nandu which is the um, sort of ostrich like bird and um, so I inserted some ostrich related things and that afternoon we had just walked the dog and we were bickering or well, bickering we were having a discussion about which tree was which so I looked them up and I drew um, the leaves in here so that from now on we know which is which but when I was making this I had just read um, a message from a friend who was a little bit um, overstrained and she taught me um, the French word sur ménage um, and I I jotted that down because I wanted to look up the Dutch word for it so that's what I had learned and then I sort of dove into French music so I was listening to French music when doing this and well there we went from there on I started to insert some French so in a way this is sort of a journal page talking about things that happened to me that day although the Nandu didn't happen to me that day I made the Nandu happen on on paper um but i was listening to that music and then there is like a dramatic thing at the end it says look there is a hole have you seen it and there is a hole there is a hole in here so i created that hole and what's also funny is thinking of french when i was on ballet when i was a girl we had to do pas de chat which is the cat's jump or cat's pass pace and then um i find it really funny because i drew this guy and i I um, wrote down pas de bras, which is like has no arms. So the poor chap's there standing with just hands, no arms. And here it says, et ici, tu vois, ici, il n'y a rien à voir, rien du tout. That's a hole. It says here, you see, here there is nothing to be seen, nothing at all. And it's true because it's just a void, which is kind of funny because at the same time, when you turn over the page, you can already have a sneak preview of what's happening. So it's sort of like an ironic thing that I really liked. And this hole, by the way, is this heart. It's the same paper that I cut out and I coloured and I glued the, right there. And, um, well, I sort of messed about so the hole changed shape just a bit. So next page. So here we go. This is another very um uh society critical page um like okay here says <laughs> looking hole if if your looking hole is your ass you will have fragmented misreasoning like when you look here you can only see a fragment and if you start making uh, if you start you know um drawing conclusions from that it's it's fragmented misreasoning so and this is the ss hate and um, this is all about people, you know, not listening, not looking at each other, but just, you know, spreading so much noise and, you know, it's like silly duck just caring about money. Well, it's, 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 it's a lot of things, you know, here is the, the oil rig um, things that the oil rig pumps, or I don't know what you call them. Um, here in the Netherlands, we call them yay sayers, like they say yes all the time. It's like the people who don't think, but just mechanically say yes, mechanically go with the biggest force of the of the time. So it's very politically and society and, and um, society critical. Um, and it was all born from this little um, scrap paper that says principle um, and he, like you have your principles. And here, um, on the other side of the page, the one that I, the part that I cut cut off, it says silly. Um, so principles and silly, that sort of, I don't know. Before I knew it, I was drawing all this kind of thing. And the SS hate is of course about to destroy all that's flowering and living. So yeah. And then the last one, and I just finished that. So you can see the style is changing, and this one is very. Um, it's like tiles it's like a mosaic whereas this is telling a story you know with the rocket shooting up through the other things and here too so this is more like a mosaic a lot of a very different style um, and this is about you know being 
Okay, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had to check and see if it was still running because my previous video got interrupted and I don't know why. Um, I just found out. So I was talking about how this page is such a different style from the other ones, much more fragmented and mosaic-y than um, the previous pages that were sort of glued together in a way. Um, but, you know, maybe this is one of the things you need to experience when you're experimenting with new techniques, especially when it's by other, stu when it's by other artists. Um, gradually start weaving your own style in and when you do, you will learn things and things that you think at first you will like um, because they're closer to your own style, sometimes no longer work in that style. So, um, well, let's just see. I'll be making a lot more different ones. Right, so um, this week is going to be the rest of the week, I have to say, is going to be all about my project, the one that I'm doing for um, the Patreon, for you guys. So here is a line. There's only death, dead fish float um, on the river, um, which is quite true. It's like people sometimes say, go with the flow. But sometimes you should not go with the flow. You should just go your own way. Living fish don't go with the flow. They go where they want to or where they need to. And let's not even talk about eels and salmons because they will go against the flow. <laughs> so I, I kind of like that. I think I'm kind of an eel or a salmon. Um, so this week is going to be about my project, about the Patreon and about everything I want to um, set up for that. Um, there's going to be, oh, that's the problem. Yes, I suddenly realise, hey. hold on. <laughs> now I know why my video was interrupted. My battery life was low. I keep forgetting how much energy it takes to make a video. So anyway, I was talking about this week. And um, this week is going to be all about the Patreon project that I'm that I have in here. Um, and there is a little thing I can already tell you um, if you're interested in joining me. Um, there is some little thing you can do to prepare. And um, my Patreon is going to be all about watercolor and mixed media. So there is going to be um, it's going to be a community thing. So it's not just going to be me and you looking at me. There's going to be some of that too, of course. But there's definitely going to be a me looking back at you and you looking at each other. And I'm going to tell you all about that when I'm making the video to talk about the project. But, um, so it's going to be an interactive thing. And there's going to be interaction on two levels. So um, the first level is going to be related to... Um, to the supplies, to materials. That's going to be um, uh, something that many people can join in. Um, also, you know, everyone who, who's watching the videos here on YouTube. And then there is a second um, uh, way of how you can join in. And that is by um, a more um, expressive, creative, um, thing where we go, we go into personal storytelling um, with the aids of uh, watercolour and mixed media and also a lot of text because that's um, um, in my work it's always very important not specifically in you know my artwork my watercolours but in all the other work that I do it's very often about bringing together text and image and you know that's sort of a holy marriage because what comes out is always the core of what you want to say, the core of your story. So I have lots and lots and lots to say about that. And I can't wait to start on both because they're going to be great. So the first project I'll be launching is the supplies related one. So that's like, I would, al I would almost say that's sort of like the, tech the more technical one that's um, open for everyone who likes watercolour and mixed media. Um, and who likes to go on an adventure from there using the supplies as a starting point. So if you're interested, um, you're very welcome to join me. 
I will soon post a video in which I explain everything and then I'll, you know, I'll be, um, I'm going to film the first videos for that Patreon this week and upload them. But you can do a little something in preparation. We're going to start um, the first the first month of the project is going to be starting with PY150. So that's nickel, azo, yellow in many um, brands. So PY150. Um, that's one of the um, pigments that came out as an absolute favorite um, in the little poll that I did. So um, I decided that, you know, it's spring here in the Northern Hemisphere and summer is coming up. So I thought it was going to be a perfect uh, a perfect pigment to start with also it's a pigment that I think many watercolorists have in uh, their collections so um, what you can do is check out your watercolor supplies and see if you have it and if you don't you might consider getting yourself um, a PY 150 watercolor paint it doesn't matter which brand um, although for this purpose, it would be best if you bought artist quality paint, um, because um, when you buy the artist quality, it will be the purest paint, the purest pigment with the purest behavior. And that's going to be most helpful and most inspiring, I think, in this project. So um, what else do you need? Well, everything you have, basically. And I'm not lying. I, I should be saying everything you have and more, but I'm not going to um, urge anyone to spend big amounts of money. I know art supply is super expensive, um, so I think it's good um, if, you know, we start with one colour at the time. And if you don't have the colour, you can buy it. The PY 150 is not a very expensive pigment. Um, there are super expensive pigments and I've decided not to go for that, especially not the first time. Uh, maybe later on we can try another one that's more expensive. So I'm going to tell you the ins and outs of what we're going to be doing with that pigment, um, but not now. So this was just a little something for you and I hope you are looking forward to it. So am I. Um, so I'm going to uh, clean up my desk because... Um, you know, working with the Lewis, Lewis Rosigmill technique is fun, but um, he, he says it himself, it's messy and it is because you tend to drag out everything you've got and it's, it's scattered all over your um, worktop. So um, it, it really is at the moment. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in my next video. If you like this video, if you're not already signed up then you can sign up here and what can also be really helpful is if you are interested in um, joining my project on patreon um, uh, that is that you sign up for my newsletter when you go to my website which is www.mendyvangoeien.com so it's just my name.com um, there you will find um, a little link to where you can sign up to my newsletter i haven't sent out newsletters for a long time because i've been i've constantly been waiting uh, for the moment to be able to to announce to make a few announcements so i'm not someone to send out numerous newsletters uh, a week or a month even um, and i'm not doing it super regularly at the moment i might that might change in the future with my project being on its way but you know i'm not going to bombard you with uh, newsletters that are gonna uh, keep you know i'm not it's not the newsletter type where you will find me begging for uh, to buy stuff um Although I will probably mention when something's, something new is online or when I've got some new work in my shop. Um, that will be in the newsletter, but it won't be the, um, the it, it will be more of a footnote rather than the, the key message. <laughs> okay, so in other words, what I want to say is that in my newsletter, I want to offer something that's really nice to read instead of, um, you know, a sales talk. So, right. I think I've said everything I needed to say and, um, well, I'm looking forward to um, seeing you in the Patreon, in the newsletter and everywhere and here on YouTube, of course. And um, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you very soon with some really good news. <laughs> see you then. Bye.